Oh, sick. Today on BC POV, we ride Santa Claus's bike park? <laughs> I'm not kidding. As many subscribers to the channel will know, my wife and I are on a massive road trip across North America. After driving all the way east to Quebec, then all the way south to Florida, we've finally hit the west coast. We've busted out of Arizona, and we've arrived in the San Bernardino Mountains just outside of Los Angeles. We've come to ride at a place called Sky Park, which is at the top of the mountain. In fact, this place is like no other bike park I've ever visited. First and foremost, it's a Christmas themed park, complete with European style buildings, a train, visits with Santa and his brother and his brother's wife and whoever these people are. Anyways, you get the point. It's a year round Christmas village with all the characters to go along with it. But as it turns out, the owners of the park are also mountain bikers and they've decided to include mountain biking along with other attractions. And even though it's located at the top of a very large mountain, the park only has about 380 feet of elevation. And at $49 for a day pass, you might expect some kind of chairlift or shuttle here. Well, you'd be mistaken. You've got to pedal your own butt to the top here. But hey, as the 350 foot spider mountain in Texas has proven, you don't need big elevation to have fun. So why would you need a chairlift? Turning up at Sky Park started out great, as we met up with Tony from the YouTube channel, The Outsider MTB. But his first claim to fame wasn't actually YouTube. Some of you may recognize him from his early days as a pro skater from the late 90s and early 2000s. We're also joined by Alan from MTB Alan and his wife Kelly. All these guys are local to the area, so it's great to have them along to show us the trails. I mentioned earlier that there's no lift here. And while that's a little disappointing, the pedal up is pretty relaxed, which is perfect since I plan on doing as many laps as I can today. As we make our way up, it dawns on me how nice it is to be in these tall pine trees again. We spent the last few weeks riding desert trail, and while desert riding is fun and interesting, riding through these tall trees on this loamy ground really feels like home to me. Near the top of the climb, there's a skinny challenge on the side of the trail. Who can't resist a skinny? Oh god. <laughs> That's a janky ass skinny. For the first lap, we decide to head down a trail called Arrow, which is named after Sky Park's dog. And it's completely packed with features. Literally every few seconds, there's something new to hit. Tires. <laughs> oh. Sorry, here's that double. Okay. Oh. I'll get that next time. I love it when they pack so many features into a single trail. It really reminds me of Cat's Paw at Highland Bike Park in New Hampshire. All right, now I see. You can see why they can get away with charging fifty dollars. <laughs> but Arrow isn't the only trail that's packed with features. Oh god. Keep going! <laughs> yeah. Get a little further that time. Our next trail, Comet, is something that people will either love or hate. And that's because it's absolutely packed with skinnies. Oh. Skinny. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Oh. <laughs> if it's there, you gotta ride it. 
the Ewok village here. I personally enjoy riding them, but that might have something to do with the fact that my home trails are on the north shore of Vancouver, where the ladder bridge was invented. Skinnies totally are an old school feature though. They became popular back when mountain bikes were short and head angles were steep. You pretty much have to ride them slowly, and with today's enduro bikes being long and slack, they just don't play quite as well on them. And in a world where mountain biking is just getting faster and faster, I can understand why skinnies aren't so popular anymore. But I still enjoy the challenge. Oh god! <laughs> This is cool. Sick. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, this is uh, janky. Yeah, there's that guy too. <laughs> Let me go look quick. Oh, you got two options. <laughs> this is pretty classic North Shore, yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, Comet isn't the only trail with skinnies on the mountain. Oh god. And with my insistence to ride every trail in the park today, I dragged our slightly uninterested crew down naughty or nice. Oh, oh, there's already wood. But this trail has something that's truly rare in mountain biking these days. The teeter-totter. Oh God, <laughs> I came into it and it was still bouncing from when Tony went over it. Seen as a liability by governing bodies and insurance companies alike, these features tip as you ride over them. Big one. Oh, stairs, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> Continuing on, the whole lower section of the trail is basically just one giant skinny as well. continued into another teeter-totter. Oh, another teeter. Oh, it's really skinny. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Except Yuka didn't know that. <laughs> Those insurance companies may have a point. Heading back up. Yeah. <laughs> Front washed and I think you probably have to hop your back there. Yeah. It's time to hit the most popular trail in the park, Neverland. Neverland is to Sky Park as A-Line is to Whistler. It's a whole lot of jumps and it's a whole lot of fun. Woo. Sick. Joy! Red. Oh. Don't fly off that thing. Whew. Sick. Whew. Oh God. Yeah. I'm not doing it right now. Oh, that's curved. Whew. But this was just my first lap on Neverland, but it definitely wasn't my last. Oh yeah, this place is good. <laughs> it keeps you popping. Like, yeah. There's not a lot of downtime yeah. on the trail, you know? It's totally. But you know, Neverland may have a ton of jumps on it, but none of them are the biggest in the park. That's because there's one at the bottom of the park by the village called the Session Jump. And this one is the biggest in the park. Case. It's a one-hit wonder made just for sessioning. 
It's where people hang out and practice their jumping skills. I've got to say, it works really nicely. Just pump that roller into the lip and it sends you into the transition just perfectly. Whew. All right, I got it pretty deep that time. Me too. That was yeah. my best one. Yeah, me too. Sick. All right. I think so what did I think of Sky Park in the end? Well, I've got to say, it was a pretty nice surprise. To be completely honest, I had never heard of it until Tony and Alan mentioned it. It sounded like a pretty nice place, so we decided to give it a try. Oh. For folks living down in LA, pine forests are hard to come by. But just drive up to the top of the San Bernardino Mountains, and you've got a pine forest that made even this guy from BC feel at home. Everything at Sky Park is really nicely built and floats super well. There's interesting cool features all over the place. But the price of admission at $49 is a little steep. Especially when bike parks with chairlifts like Highland or Spider Mountain charge the same price. But since many tourists come up and are willing to pay the $49 just for Santa's Village, I can understand management's conundrum when it comes to pricing. That being said, the annual pass is pretty competitive at $299, and I think that's what most of the mountain bikers here are buying. But, as always, thanks for watching, and stay gnarly.